Hello everyone. I just got done working for the winter. I worked from November to May for about six months at a restaurant in North Scottsdale. I was able to save money and also take care of some expenses. Some things that I've been wanting to take care of for a while. As soon as my last day rolled around, my parents drove all the way from Georgia to come visit and explore Arizona because it's their first time exploring and going to the Grand Canyon. So we went to the Grand Canyon, Sedona. Had a great time, but it's just been kind of a whirlwind. I just worked like the last week or two nonstop. I picked up as many shifts as possible. I was exhausted and then my parents came and I didn't have much time to really rest and re recover. You know, I rested and slept when I could, and but I was still pretty tired when they were here. And so the van has suffered because of that. It's kind of been a mess because uh, I've been kind of going back and forth between the van and their hotel and just kind of throwing things here and there. They're heading back to Georgia now and we are in Flagstaff in the forest. It's one of my favorite places to camp. I love being out here in the forest. It's so peaceful. Well, today's Saturday and next weekend I'm planning on going to a van gathering called Descend on La Sierra. It's in Northern California. This one I signed up for a couple months ago. And it's finally here. It's coming. Ugh, it's just a mixture of excitement and not really knowing what's going to happen because Having a job, it's exhausting, it takes years off your life, and it kind of sucks your soul <laughs> out, but at the same time, you have that sense of stability. When I quit my job and I go exploring and stuff, it's fun, exciting, and I feel energized and um, just where I want to be, but I don't have that sense of security that I have with a job because you never know what's going to happen. I mean, I believe that I'm protected and I'm, I feel safe and I trust that everything's going to be fine. But you never know. And it's nice to have that safety net. I do have money saved up, but it's just not, not as much as I would like. I would really like to have some sort of income where I can make money on the road so that I can continue just doing what I want and not having to stay in one place, but also... Having that stability and sense of security and safety that I want as well in my life. And after La Sierra, I plan to go to Colorado for the summer and maybe find a job there. The plans are a little hazy and up in the air, but that's what the plan is for now. Of course, it's always changing. Um, I haven't van lifed in Colorado yet, so a new adventure awaits me and I am excited <laughs> to see what is in store. But first, we need to clean the van up and take care of some things before we start moving we to wait. our next destination. Hear the birds and see the sun. Okay, it's warming up, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the sliding door. Gonna put Sadie's bell collar on. In the van tour, a lot of you seemed very concerned that Sadie was wearing her bell collar all the time just because she was wearing it in the video. She wears it maybe not even 5% of the time. She does not wear it all day long. I know it's loud and annoying, but she only wears it when she's outside without a leash, which is not very often. And when she's outside without a leash, she is the type of cat that does not go very far. She mostly just stays in the van or under the van. And if she is wandering around, I got my mama eyes on her. So please don't worry. Everything's under control. <laughs> 
and she's not wearing this all day long every day. Katie's <laughs> so happy. She's so excited to be out. We already found a lizard to chase. This is kind of what the back looks like without all the stuff in it. There's the hot water heater that I don't use. Um, <laughs> there's the inverter and battery there. And this is just all the space I use for storage. I have this container for winter clothes and clothes that I don't wear that much. This is like volleyball and stuff for fun, scuba stuff, economy detergent so I can fill the one up inside with this big guy and just some other things right now i'm currently in the process of doing the compost again we got some fruit flies in there and they reproduced pretty quickly before i could contain it and that happens sometimes it's okay so i'm just redoing the compost and this is how i'm doing it hopefully it works take this brick brick of coconut core and just kind of pour water over it slowly and it absorbs the water and over time, over like 30 minutes, it's eventually going to start like kind of crumbling and becoming this uh, compost material that's like kind of a start to it. Coconut core is what it's called. So I'm just going to let that bask in the sun a little while while I take care of other things in advance. It's a dirty job, but somebody's gotta do it, right? So I'm gonna dump the old gnat infested compost out and maybe clean it up a little bit, make sure there's no more gnats or eggs in there and let it air out while the new compost continues to absorb the water and break apart. One thing I wanna do is paint the wheels black. They are silver now, but part of it is kinda coming off they're looking a little dingy i kind of like the way the all black wheels look on other people's vans i have this plastic dip never used plastic dip but a friend told me that it's probably the best thing for it because you can peel it off if you change your mind so you can just peel the paint right off at first i'm going to wash them i've been wanting to do that for a while but it's been so windy in southern arizona out in the desert i guess because there's no trees to block the wind but here it's very calm so we shouldn't have any problems it's been a very productive day we got a lot of stuff done got the wheels painted the compost changed out and just did a whole deep clean of the whole van and everything's looking great i'm happy but now i think i'm gonna go into town and get some food all right so i spent the night at a hotel last night and everything was fine. Went to Starbucks, took care of internet things there. Then I went to Planet Fitness and showered. Now I just got back from Whole Foods and I need to put groceries away. And then I think we're about ready to hit the road and go to our next destination.
before anyone says anything, I use natural. You mix it with water and mix it in with your compost and it's supposed to help keep gnats from getting in your compost. We did that before and it helped a lot but it had been such a long time since I changed the compost out that it was probably just time to change it, you know, and that's why the gnats happened. I used that this time so we should be good. Good morning! So we're in Joshua Tree National Park. We entered from the south entrance last night. I spent the night on I guess it's BLM land right outside of the park. It's about 8 a.m. and I'm driving in trying to get here early because it's gonna get hot today once the sun gets up overhead. It's about four miles to the nearest visitor center so we're just driving. I haven't seen a single Joshua tree yet. I'm on the lookout <laughs> but at least the first couple miles it's just cacti and mountains not a whole lot to see, but it's still beautiful to me. I'm gonna try to find a map and see if there are any good hiking trails. So the map out there, the information board said that the parking lots usually fill up by 10 a.m. 7.39 now. My guess would be it's not as crowded once it gets this hot, but I could be wrong. And obviously this is the park. We are here. We started at the bottom in the south entrance and it looks like most of the stuff is over here at the north. Here, it looks like maybe we can hike on top of a mountain. It says 5,000 feet. It's called Ryan Mountain and it doesn't really say how long the hike is. We're just gonna see when we get there. around my hat. The idea is for extra sun protection from the sides and the back so my neck and the sides of my face are protected from the sun. In an attempt to not wear sunscreen. I don't like wearing sunscreen. <laughs> this is my first time trying it out and it's beautiful. Descending the mountain now. That was a beautiful hike. So happy I chose to do that. Not as many Joshua trees on this mountain as I was hoping for, but there were a few small ones. So the Joshua tree is not an actual tree, it is a yucca plant, and they can grow up to 40 feet tall. Cool thing about Joshua Tree Park is it is like the merging of the Mojave Desert and the Colorado Desert. It's kind of where they meet. So you have all different types of plant life and animal life from both deserts here. I was hoping to see a bighorn sheep, but it might be too hot right now for them. I haven't seen any sheep yet. I saw a couple lizards and a quail and I keep my eyes peeled for any other friends. On this back, I can see Van right there. That 
that one has seen better days. That one's pretty tall. done with Joshua Tree National Park. I'm happy that I finally came here. It kind of reminds me of Valley of Fire with all the rock formations that you can kind of climb on. Now it's time to move north. We're going to go through the park and get gas because we only have 67 miles left. And painfully put seven dollars a gallon <laughs> in the tank. I don't want to do it. <sighs> but we have to so probably head to Yosemite National Park. It's not gonna be as hot. I guess it's higher elevation. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I'm excited to check it out. So let's go. 